welcome! Now today we are going to explore a beautiful CD and mini disc deck, the ProLine Tascam MD CD1. So normally this sort of thing tends to be way out of my reach, because this is indeed a professional grid mini disc uh, recorder and CD player in one. Now as you can see from the rack mounts there, that's quite a big clue. And uh, not only that, the name Tascam, which indeed is TIAC, but it's TIAC's professional range. Now, as I was saying earlier, this is a professional grade uh, CD and mini disc deck. And, uh, you know, I got this, I managed to find this and get it at a fraction of a price that, you know, it normally goes for. The prices are absolutely ridiculous for it. Um, but, I mean, it's professional grade, so I'm guessing that's the reason why. So moving on to the overall features of this Tuscom MDCD1, let's have a bit of an overview of this. So it completely lights up and makes some interesting sounds. So what I like about this is that it feels very intuitive. There's no, you know, extra goofing around, you know, you know I don't like menus within menus. Uh, so this has, okay, the CD side here, all the functions of the CD, the mini disc side here, all the functions of the mini disc. However, except for you know, a couple, which is like time and display applies to both. I haven't messed around with this too much, by the way. <laughs> so yeah. Over here, we have the headphone output with the headphone volume, and you can select what you want to hear, right? So you've got the CD there and you will just hear the CD. Take it, switch it to mini disc. You will just hear the mini disc, and then you know in the center you have common, which is you mix a mix of the MD and CD. Now I can see myself having it mostly on common, but you know for whatever reason somebody might need a specific for CD or MD. Uh, you know that's pretty cool that there's an option there. I'm always happy to see things with an option. <laughs> you know there's always an option of doing whatever you want to do. You know options the way forward for me. Now you can select CD or MD over here. And I really like the fact that, you know, it does two separate menus and, you know, you can choose that. You can choose for the CD menu to be um, the dominant ones that it has the system settings, or you can choose, you know, the MD menu, menu, menu. <laughs> so you can choose which menu is kind of dominant. Now, bear in mind, I'm explaining all this to you. But this is the first time I've actually messed with this properly, yeah? I've looked at it, I've glanced at it, I can see what I know, I'm just seeing what the heck it is. But it's the first time I'm actually going into it and looking what everything is. So if I'm understanding this first time, it's gotta be good. You know, it's very intuitive looking. So let's load a mini disc into here just to, I mean, you won't be able to hear it because it's not connected. See what's going on there on the screen. So with this, what you can do, the menu, MD menu is um, you can select the play mode, Q level, pitch step. Ooh, interesting. So you can adjust the pitch step. Ah, so how quick up and down. Oh, yeah, that's another. This has got pitch control on the mini disc and it's got pitch control on there. Now, the key I'm figuring is like the tempo. So back to the menu. So the plays have. No. What the frick is an EOM disc? I need to look some of these up because some of these are new to the, the consumer one which I have, the Technics one. Some of these things are very new. Okay, let's come out of here. I mean display, I mean this volume function. What's this? Record volume. Ooh, okay. I thought that was here because it's got like recording levels for left and right. So what's this? Ah, okay. This is kind of like adjusting it you know, before this, so, it, ah, to balance them, maybe. Maybe if it's like a little imbalance, which would annoy me anyway, I'd have to find out why it's unbalanced. Oh, by the way, this has MDLP as well. Recording speed. Ah, that's for the, ooh, that's for the dubbing, I think. But it's gotta be, isn't it? Someone uh. can record it fast. So, <laughs> you can dub between CD and um, mini disc, and you can do it at high speed, I'm assuming. So, let's have a look again at what the more... I'm kind of enjoying this, <laughs> looking into the... See, it's so intuitive. It's just... I somehow know what to do with the... It's got edit functions, right, protected, okay, yes, but can you please show me the... Can you please show me the functions? You freak. Let's stop this. Okay, still 
I'll write and enable you. You will not record over you. So you can create groups on the disk. This you can't do on the consumer one, well, not, not consumer one that I've seen or I've, uh, you know, messed with so far. Erase disk, erase track, undo. Undo! Undo what? So record mod, um, yeah, L LP2, LP4, standard. Standard is the normal minis mod, then it has mono, then it's LP2, which is long play 2. It's like slight compression, long play 4, which has got a lot of compression. So we'll explore those later. So the back of it, as you can see here, this got one input here and the outputs. You can choose between three, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, you can choose with it just having the mini disc output, CD output, or you can connect the mini disc and CD to separate inputs on your amplifier or separate places like uh, the keyboard port that not that commonly found. Personally, I think it should be a must on every deck to be able to connect a um, PS2 keyboard. I'm not sure why they didn't put it on every deck. I mean, okay, you can understand the little portable player now, but the deck, dudes. The deck. Why did you not put it on every deck? So as you may have figured by now, if you've been watching my channel for a while, is that I'm a curious person. And yeah, my hand has been crawled all the way to the screwdriver. So yes, I'm gonna open this up and tear it down. Let's see what's inside this. Let's see what makes it tick. Jeez, I know it's a good deck and all, and it seems very lovable. I'm liking it already, but this seems like the freaking Terminators had his wicked way with it. What the freak? Okay, one thing which I'm definitely gonna do with this is take off the... Um, the rack mount brackets. Okay, so one bracket off here. Now you saw last time when I opened up the Technics and I repaired the um, the actual jug dial on it and you know checked it out and stuff. What what it's like inside, and I was quite overwhelmed at how simple it was inside. Is that all? Is that literally all there is? No joke, there's nothing here. <laughs> right, let's see now if what well, this is like a professional grade Tuscan. Okay, interesting. Now then, first impression this seems to be built solid like a freaking tank. <laughs> Dude, this is an IDE CD ROM drive. <laughs> it's even got the Molex connector, the ID. I had a suspicion that it was gonna be, to be honest. Okay, I don't like go around too much in it because I don't want to disturb anything. I just wanted to see what it's like. That mini disc mechanism, it's freaking amazing compared to the, the the Technics one, which you know, which was just like open and out in the air, and this is just built solid. I'm very impressed with this. Oh no, capacitors! Look how many they are. And over here, there are through hole. Let's hope I never ever need to do a recap on this ever. Just please, just keep working. Let's see which this dude actually is. Well, at least it's a Tiak. You know, staying faith uh, faithful to the brand of everything else here. Okay, so let's turn it on. It's gonna be connected to my external speakers. Yeah. I'm gonna do a few tests on. Oops, on Amiga stuff. The, put a blank disc in. Okay, there we go, blank disc. Right, what I want to show first is the editing, the dubbing, right? So I did kind of find the instruction manual for this and I did look up the dubbing part. So I'm gonna get some CD32 discs. Now since these have the soundtracks on, I assume that you can load them as CDs, just audio CDs. Load them. I mean, play them in <laughs> players. So yeah, we have the CD that works very nice. So you have to change it into a single mod or something. You know which track I'm looking for, those of you who know me well. Ah, oh, this is the one. I love it. Oh, that's 
sounds so good. Let's stop that and change the pitch increment in this. Pitch step, sorry. Let's make it step by one, one percent rather than point one. Here we go. By one percent. It's normal. You can take it down, of course. When you press the key, I think it changes the tempo but not the pitch. So it's going faster. You can actually, actually, you can tell more with a tune which has a beat. Like this one, for example. It's got a rhythm, you can tell. See what I mean? If you take the key off, it'll take three teachers' pitch. Just increase the pitch and adjusted it. This is actually useful if I'm recreating a song on Soundtracker, I can like slow it down a bit just to kind of, you know, hear it a bit better, if you know what I mean. If I'm trying to capture a note, which note is that, so forth. I'm gonna do high speed dubbing on this. So on the CD part, we search for track then. Sorry, select track then. Press play. You guessed right. This is what I want on the mini disc. Just this track. So while this is doing, we press dubbing here. Hear it almost taking off. It says dubbing wait, but what you're supposed to do is press play here. And then yeah, let's put this down because you're gonna be able to hear it while it's dubbing high speed. Uh, hold on. Is it recording standard? Let's try that again. I'm not sure if I was recording standard or if I was recording on long play. If you're recording on long play, it's not full high speed, if you know what I mean. So let's go to the mini disc menu. Record, record speed, no. Record mod. Yes, it's an LP2, right. So if you want to record even faster, standard mod, then you press play and you'll notice what I mean. It's even faster. <laughs> Recorded just beautifully, perfectly. You can alter the pitch on the mini disc as well. You notice the key just makes no difference. So the key is just for the CD, but this doesn't have a key. This button here is input select, the optical analog, and that's it. Anyway, so let's do a sound comparison test between the CD and what I've just recorded on the mini disc. Now, for this, I'm going to connect the the deck right directly to your ears, so you can be the judge of you know what is. I mean, I know there's it's not going to be exactly accurate on YouTube, but the best I can do, the best I can present to you, so it's better than nothing. Now, this will indicate that it's from a CD, and this light here will indicate that it's from a mini disc. So yeah, that's how you'll tell the difference. Now I will keep my opinions to myself so that it doesn't, you know, um, influence anybody's opinions or what anyone else hears. But uh, yeah, uh, the quality stuff, I'm not the, about the quality of everything. I'm going to do a separate video and I'm going to do some good tests on the, um, the mini discs and, uh, and so forth. So that's in a future video so that you get more mini disky stuff coming <laughs> at some point. No, I mean, this is amazing. I have myself a nice uh, 
CD, de CD player as well as a mini disc player all in one and I think this is what I needed because I didn't actually have room for two separates and I was wanting a CD player as well so this is just perfect really just perfect now let's do something a little interesting shall we let's connect this beautiful CD mini disc deck with an Amiga so normally what you would do is connect the input here to the mini disc with the output of the Amiga, right? So the sound goes directly into there. However, those of you who know Amiga music know that the stereo separation is ridiculously wide, as in too wide for comfort. You cannot listen to it with headphones. So to those of you who remember, I did a stereo separation project uh, I did it way back in my you know, teens, but I've properly made it now. And you can adjust the stereo separation. It's a very simple circuit. All you need to do is just... The output of the Amiga goes in here. The output of the stereo separator... Goes into the mini disc. So you can adjust the stereo separation in line. It's very it's a passive circuit, it's very simple. If you wish to watch the video on this, it's linked in the description below. And last but not least, power. And we're done. And now we load in some music. Seriously need to recap this freaking Amiga, it's annoying the freak out of me! Crash after crash! Those of you who keep saying recapping is not required, eat this! It is so slow on the Amiga 500, how the freak did I used to use this? The soundtrack ran to all this, <laughs> using a 500 on floppy disks. Just goes to show when you really into something, you have patience of a saint. <laughs> single drive was doing my freaking dream <laughs> okay it's all good yeah you freaking sound loaded after all that <laughs> so anyway let's just check the um the levels literally i've maxed out on the input levels and everything um, this the uh, power the output of the Amiga is very low so connecting it directly to this is it's gonna be a little quieter than it should so I do recommend an amplifier here uh, or between it but you still can work you know I'm just doing it for demonstration purposes only it's already queued queued on uh, record pause so you just press play to start recording <laughs> Try another track. I think I got so used to the Amiga 1200 for <laughs> stuff like this. Many of you is gonna like this one. I'm never quite sure on the name of this track. Is it FUD? Is it MoMA? Is it Echoing? Like Banana Echoing? I don't know what the freak the name is on this track. So now that recordings are complete, I will connect this to your ears and you can then hear how the recording sounds.
last but by no means least, I want to demonstrate um, the connecting the keyboard to this. So I have here a standard PS2 keyboard with the PS2 port, of course. I tried this with um, the USB protocol, PS2 protocols with the adapter. It just didn't like it for some reason. So it likes, from all the keyboards that I have, I tried the one with the actual PS2 plug on it. That's the one that works. Now this has lots of ways to control, you know, the mini disc. You can, you know, all these controls here, you can control them via the keyboard, not just the character input. So yeah, I don't know all of them because it's too much to learn. But here, you can see what functions they have. The one I know is Shift F8 to actually, um, edit the characters, edit the uh, title I mean. So let's play one. Let's try it. Shift F8. Okay. Oh wow, this is cool. Oh my goodness, I feel so much better just, re just you recording with mini discs now. <laughs> Except I spelled the freaking thing wrong. It's cut there. Freaking, <laughs> let's try that again. You can edit as well. Oh, this is so cool. See, just editing that. <gasps> I'm gonna start recording mini discs now. <laughs> just for this. Now, if I wanted to name this, I haven't done it for a while, so I've probably forgotten some of the keys. Edit, yeah, name. And then, let's say I wanna type in Momo. I don't even know what the freak this track is called, as I said, so it's got a few names. I have to go ahead, M, and search around for the freaking all. Oh, that's if you want to do cups, by the way. Uh, if you want to do... Oh, what? oh no, what have I just done? I don't know what I do. <laughs> How do you take it lowercase? Oh, don't tell me you have to go through. Oh, you have to go to the... Oh. Okay. Now you know why I found it so tedious. <laughs> okay. So let's name the rest of the tracks with keyboard. Because it feels good doing that. <laughs> Shift F8. Hello. It's done. <laughs> Shift eight. The name? Chinese dream. Done. <laughs> Kicking his <ease> dream. <laughs> my hands tap too quick for my brain. There you go. Let's just rename this one for the sake of it. <laughs> I'm gonna delete this disc anyway and start again. Later on. Shift F8. Fire and ice. Ooh. Under water. <gasps> it's so nice! <laughs> I'm gonna freaking be on all my mini discs. <laughs> Look at all these juicy no titles. Tunes that are waiting for me to rename on the keyboard. So, now there's gonna be more mini disc stuff upcoming in the future. I'm gonna do more comparisons and recording tests and so forth. I'm not gonna tell you exactly what it is because I'm gonna keep it a little bit of a surprise. But there's definitely more mini disc stuff coming up soon. So, I hope you enjoyed this. Do stick around for that in future. Subscribe, you know, ring that bell. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I hope you enjoyed this, because I had fun with this. Now thank you so much for your likes, your shares, do leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to check out my other videos, because it's quite a library of them now. And do subscribe for more. Now for now, I will leave you with Tascam. 
Entonces, adiós.